Hello, I'm Sarah Feldman, Director of Planning and Scheduling for Edmonton Transit Service at the City of Edmonton. Here at ETS, we're excited that Edmonton is getting all new bus routes and a new on-demand transit service starting on April 25, 2021. The new bus network has more frequent buses, more direct routes, and it's better connected. It'll be there for you even on evenings and weekends. For areas without regular bus service in the new network, there's on-demand transit to provide shuttle bus rides between select transit hubs and select neighborhoods when you need it. With these new services and our expanding LRT system, we'll keep you better connected to the people and places that matter to you. My team and I have been working on these projects for a number of years, and we're excited to see them come to life for customers like you. Let me tell you more about the improvements you'll see. This presentation is divided into three sections. Section one starts with an overview of the new services. Then it outlines how the new bus network works, describes the five types of new bus routes, and explains the new route numbering system. Yes, that's a lot of new things you need to know by April 25th. Section two explains what on-demand transit is and how you can use it. Section three outlines the self-serve tools that can help you understand and use the new bus routes and on-demand transit. This section also includes where to get the most up-to-date information on these services. Okay, let's get started. Section one, a new bus network. In this section, I will give you a general overview of what's happening, cover the different types of routes and the new route numbers. The new bus network and on-demand transit service work together, so we're launching them both on April 25th. They're part of our overall work to modernize transit and create a more attractive service for customers like you. What you'll experience is the result of input from thousands of Edmontonians. It reflects industry best practices and is guided by Edmonton's transit strategy. It's been 20 years since we last did a major update to our bus network. In that time, Edmonton has expanded and customer needs have evolved. Our old network just isn't designed to handle today's transit needs. While our new network not only meets today's needs, it also sets a solid foundation for future growth of our city. As I mentioned earlier, the new bus network will better connect Edmontonians through more direct and frequent routes. And on-demand transit will complement regular bus service so we can get more people to the places they need to go. The majority of transit customers tell us they want direct, frequent, and better connected service, and we've delivered on that in the new bus network. The new network has the same number of buses and service hours as the old network. The difference is how they are used. We made improvements by straightening the routes and combining others with duplicated service. So even though the new network has fewer bus routes, they provide more service. This means more routes run during the day, evenings, and weekends. Or the routes come more often, especially in central locations throughout the day or suburban areas during peak hours. Remember that when we say the new routes are more direct, we literally mean we replace many winding routes with straighter routes. But like you, we want to ensure that seniors, children, and people with mobility constraints can access transit. So we've designed a network where 93% of addresses are within five to seven minute walk of a regular transit stop. Also, the community routes that typically used by seniors are still within a two to three minute walk of a transit stop. In the new network, there are different types of routes that work together to help you get to all areas of the city. Some come frequently, others connect suburban locations or travel within a local area. It depends on what you're looking for. The new bus network has five different types of routes to meet customers' different travel needs. These include frequent, rapid, crosstown, local, and community routes. Plus, there are OWL late night routes and new school special routes. First, there are the frequent routes. These come at least 15 minutes most of the time and generally follow main streets. They run down roads like White Avenue, Jasper Ave, or 109th Street. They've got single digit numbers like one through nine. Then there are rapid routes. They take you from the suburbs to downtown to the nearest LRT stop, and they do it in a hurry. The numbers end in X for express. There are crosstown routes. They drop you at suburban hubs without going through downtown. So if you're in Mill Woods and need to be at West Edmonton Mall, you can catch one of these. Next, we've got a lot of local routes. If you're not near a main street or a transit center, they have you covered. The local routes give you a ride to local destinations or to the nearest transit hub so that you can get where you're going. Then there are community routes. They connect seniors' residences and community hubs to places like grocery stores or healthcare facilities. 
We still have OWL service, which are a few routes that operate from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. for those of you who are out really late. Finally, we have school special routes that take students to nearby schools during peak times on weekdays. Students can also use any other type of route to get to school. These new routes provide a better connected transit system, and it's important to think about how the different types of routes work together. For example, some customers might need to transfer from local routes to frequent, cross-town or rapid routes to complete their trip. More than the bus routes are new, let's now talk about bus stop signs. There are all new bus stop signs. These are a great way to see what's going on in your neighborhood. Each sign has a temporary sticker on the front that provides important information about what's happening at each stop on April 25th, 2021. The first type of sign are existing bus stop signs that will have service in the new network. These will have a red and white sticker. Routes that are using the bus stop until April 24th are listed in the red section. The new route numbers that start using the bus stop on April 25th are listed in the white section. The second type of sign are brand new bus stops. These new bus stop signs have a yellow sticker saying that the service starts on April 25th. The new route numbers that start on April 25th are listed in the white section. The third type of sign are closing bus stop signs. These have a red sticker. The bus route numbers that stop running after April 24th are listed in the white section. In some areas, regular bus service is being replaced with on-demand transit shuttle service. These closing bus stops have a red and blue sticker. The bus routes that stop running after April 24th are listed in the white section, and these will be replaced with on-demand service. After April 25th, the temporary stickers will gradually be removed from the existing and opening bus stop signs. The closing bus stop signs and poles will be removed entirely. Bus shelters at closing stops will be removed and will be placed over the next few years at busy bus stops that can, that can accommodate a shelter. If you take a closer look at the new bus route numbers, you'll see they're different from the old numbers. There is also more information on each sign to help you make your transit trip, which I'll explain next. A new bus network means we need to update bus stop signs all over the city. So we took the opportunity to improve them. The signs have new features to help you get around more easily, including a larger bus icon to improve vis visibility and route numbers with destinations. Frequent routes are identified with a clock symbol next to the route destinations. You can also check when your next bus is coming by texting or phoning the numbers at the bottom of the sign. The new bus route numbers are organized to help you understand the purpose of the routes and where the route is going. Single and double digit routes travel from one area of the city to another. Frequent routes are one through nine. These routes are part of the backbone of the network, so we want an easy way to identify them. But remember, even if the numbers look similar to the old routes, they go to different places at different times. Crosstown routes are 51 through 56, and they connect suburban areas in different quadrants of the city. Most three-digit routes operate mainly in one area of the city. These are rapid, local, and community routes. They start with 1, 5, 7, and, or 9. Imagine a clock face laid on top of a map of the city. The clock arms point to different areas in Edmonton. So their 100 routes are in the north, the 900 routes are in the west. Have a closer look at this diagram on the slide. Some three-digit routes identify special types of service. So school specials start with a six, routes operated by St. Albert Transit continue to start with a two, and routes operated by Strathcona County Transit continue to start with a four. Route numbers that also contain a letter show that they provide a special service. For example, rapid or express routes have an X at the end of the route number. These routes have fewer stops and carry suburban commuters to central locations. And route numbers that end with an A or a B indicate that they have branches of their route, in other words, they take slightly different paths during their trip. So all new bus routes, bus stop signs, and route numbering. That's a lot to take in by April 25th. We want your first day on the new network to go smoothly, so we're providing information and self-serve tools to help you succeed. These are explained in Section 3 of this presentation. Section 2, coming up next, is about Edmonton's new on-demand transit service. It will connect select neighborhoods and seniors' residences to a nearby transit hub where passengers can transfer to a regular bus or LRT route. Section 2, On-Demand Transit. 
In this section, we'll provide an overview of the service and cover different ways to book a trip. On April 25th, 2021, on-demand transit will connect select neighborhoods and larger seniors' residences to designated transit hubs. You can book trips for shuttle bus service that runs seven days a week. The on-demand transit service is a new layer in our transit network. It provides shuttle bus service to areas of the city where the number of customers and design of the neighborhood aren't a good fit for a regular bus. A number of factors made them good candidates for pilot shuttle bus service. Edmonton is leading way the way by example. We will have Canada's largest on-demand transit service based on the number of vehicles. Of course, other tra transit agencies are also providing this type of service as part of their network. It helps attract more customers and often provides better hours of service than a regular big bus. We are running a two-year on-demand transit pilot. The service provided by our partners, PW Transit and Canada and Via Transportation. They have a lot of experience in providing on-demand transit service to other communities in Canada and internationally. We will serve 37 neighborhoods and 16 large seniors residences. We will consider adding other areas after we re review the pilot results. The on-demand transit areas are listed on our website along with their de destination transit hubs. The purpose of on-demand transit is to connect you to the neighborhood's designated transit hub where you can get a transfer to a regular bus or LRT. It's not door-to-door -door or special destination service. So what does this look like? You start by booking your trip using an app on your smartphone, from a computer, or by phoning the on-demand call center. Bookings are required before you board the shuttle bus to ensure there's enough room for everyone and for the software to route everyone to their stops. Then you walk to a set pickup location marked with an on-demand transit sign. The on-demand shuttle will pick you up and take you to a nearby transit hub. From there, you can transfer to regular transit, bus, or LRT. You don't pay a fare when boarding the shuttle bus. Instead, the fare is collected when you transfer to regular transit. For your return trip, book a pick from the designated transit hub and the shuttle will take you to one of the neighborhood drop-off spots. Most customers will walk less than 400 meters to the from the drop-off to their doorstep. The pickup locations are even closer for the 16 seniors residences participating in the on-demand transit program. The shuttle takes seniors to a nearby designated transit hub and not directly to a shopping center. So this is a bit different than the community bus route service you might be familiar with. Look for these on-demand transit signs at, in your neighborhood pickup spots or at the designated transit hubs. They tell you where the service goes and provide trip booking information. Each stop has a unique number so you can conveniently find it with the trip booking app or, or our online map. You can book your trip up to 60 minutes in advance. During peak times, you'll wait less than 30 minutes for your shuttle and less than 60 minutes during off-peak times, although times are expected to be shorter than that. If you book using the trip planning app, you can even see where your shuttle is in on real time. The on-demand transit operating hours fit with Edmonton Transit service standards. Most neighborhoods will see better service than they would with a regular big bus. The service to seniors residences runs the same hours as the new community bus routes. Now a bit more about the on-demand vehicles. There are three types of accessible shuttle buses ranging from 10 to 14 passengers. They will all have space for at least one wheelchair, walker, or child stroller. All the shuttles will have on-demand transit markings on the outside and each will have a unique vehicle number. Remember, there may be more than one shuttle at the transit hub going to different neighborhoods, so make sure to double check the vehicle number you were given when booking your trip. We have 52 shuttles equipped with a wheelchair lift. You can also use it if you have difficulty with stairs. There are another five shuttles dedicated to seniors' residences. They have low floor ramps for easy access and include space for two wheelchairs. All shuttles have space on board to store either one wheelchair, one mobility scooter, two folded walkers, or two folded child strollers. The shuttles each have one or two built-in child safety seats. When you make your booking, it is very important to identify if you have extra needs so the space can be reserved for you. This includes providing notice if you have difficulty with stairs, require space for a wheelchair, walker, child stroller, or will need a child safety seat. Remember, you'll need to bring your own infant carrier if a child weighs less than 20 pounds or 9 kilograms. If you forget to indicate these needs, the space might already be reserved by other customers 
and you could be required to wait for the next available bus. The shuttles are all equipped with seatbelts and have onboard surveillance cameras. If you have any concerns, let your, but your shuttle operator know, just like you would with a regular Edmonton Transit bus. Okay, so now you know the basics about the new bus network and on-demand transit. In the next section, I'll go over some of the information and self-serve tools that will help you make good use of these transit services. Section 3, Tools, Information, and Recap. In this section, I'll, we'll go over the different ways to plan a trip and where you can find information. If you're like me, you appreciate a good map, and we've got a bunch for you. There are three interactive Google Maps. One has all the new bus routes. The second has all the bus stops and shows that they will be open, closed, or brand new when the new network launches. There is also a third interactive Google Map that identifies all the on-demand transit pickup and drop-off spots and the designated transit hubs. We also have static maps that can be downloaded. These include a map of the entire bus network and maps of all the individual bus routes. These can all be found on our website now. Whether you've been taking transit for the past 10 years or just 10 days, everyone is basically a new user on April 25th. So we have lots of new self-serve tools to make your first trip on the new network a success. They will all be online before launch day. If they aren't up yet, please check back at a later date. They're coming. There are three ways to plan your future trip with the new bus routes. There is an easy to use trip planner on our website, or you can use third party apps, specifically Transit App or Google Maps. Just remember to enter a date the week of April 25th as the trip date that you want. Speaking of apps, there's also one called Edmonton On Demand Transit for booking trips with this new shuttle bus service. It will show you a real time map of where your shuttle bus is en route. Some people prefer the old school style route brochures with maps and schedules. These will be available online first. Some will be printed out, but distribution will be limited. There are also printed overview guides that provide a handy reference for the new bus network and on-demand transit service. It has the same information or more and is list that is listed on our website. If you prefer visuals, there are several videos that provide highlights of these new services and even a how-to guide for trip booking for on-demand transit. We figure you'll have plenty of questions, so we've developed a chat bot that you must, that will answer most of them. The chatbot's available on our website and we'll be able to answer your questions when you call 311 in the future. All new services call for a new approach, so we've really briefed up your self-serve options. We hope you'll take advantage of them all. Our website is the best place to get the most up-to-date information about these two new transit projects. Each has its own section and a special link. They are easy to remember edmonton.ca slash new bus routes and edmonton.ca slash on demand transit. So what happens after the launch on April 25th? First off, Edmonton Transit and our customers need time to allow time for these big changes to settle in. We know we're not going to get it all right, so we'll learn and look at adjustments in the future. We'll consider changes to the new bus network after about 12 to 18 months as part of our annual planning process. We'll also do a formal program evaluation of the on-demand transit two-year pilot. Rest assured that feedback from customers like you is taken into account when we look at how well service is working out. To that end, we have a public feedback form online to capture your suggested future improvements. We'll look for trends in the comments once the system has had a chance to find its feet or wheels, so to speak. So there you have it. Edmonton Transit is providing you with all new bus routes and on-demand transit service. This is a big change and we'll make sure you have the information you need to prepare. As a result of these projects, you can expect increased frequency, more direct routes, better connections during off-peak times, and more flexible options for when, where, and how you travel. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about these new services the Edmonton Transit team is proudly launching on April 25th, 2021. Thank you.